miracles when they want to do miracles. Well, I have a problem with that. Because according to my Bible, nobody told God when to do a miracle. Nobody could pray it and command it. God did it when he was ready. Yes, sir. I know y'all have a hard time with that. Y'all yeah, do have a hard time with that, don't you? God does it when he was ready. You got to be the example. How come everybody wasn't here when Jesus was on earth? He did it when he was ready. How come every blind person on earth wasn't healed when Jesus was on earth? Because it, it was when he decided who was going to do it. Well, today we're going to talk about these miracles. We're going to talk about the first one. And it was so, we think it was a simple one, but deep down it was the beginning of the beginning of the ministry of God and the work that God come to do. And when we understand that God is a, who he is, then we should start to look at it. But I want to add something else to this as I get ready to bring us to it. One of the things that stops a lot of stuff that has deluded ourselves in this, that you got more faith in the physical than you do the spirit. Yeah. 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 Right. See, right. your whole life of faith is Come based on, on what, you, what you see what you feel and what here. you think is going to happen. Yeah. But your that's not faith. On, See, you believe that if you going to hold you, don't you? Come on, you don't even think about it, do you? Right. But if that cue happened to mess up one time, uh-huh. your faith changes. Yes, sir. Because you start to look at things a little bit different. All right. All right. And I believe we done learned not to look at God the way we need to look right, at God. Right. See, God is beyond the natural. He's above, the, he is where he can enter into the supernatural. And God says to us, you can get there too. But you got to want to be there. So tonight, today, we're we going to talk about Jesus' miracle, his first one, when he turned water into one in John chapter 2 and it was says in his words of divineness that on the third day there was a wedding in Canaan of Galilee and the mother of Jesus was there both Jesus and his disciples was invited to the wedding and they ran out of wine the mother of Jesus said to him they have no wine. Now, the mother, Jesus said to her, Woman, what does that have, what does, what, does your, what does your concern have to do with me? My hour has not come. His mother said to the servant, Whatever he say to you, do it. Do it. That's, that, see, you got to understand something. See, that's already a walk of faith. Yes. Yes. Mary already knows she's going to say something because there's a problem. Yes. And she knows her son going to handle the problem. Yes. Now, she don't know how he going to handle the problem. Yes. But she do know that I done gave my son a problem and I know God is going to do something about this problem. So she turned, she don't even hesitate. Whatever he say do, you do it. I sure wish the church would learn. I would think you wouldn't even need a pass if you could just, boy, if we could just learn that part. Whatever, somebody ought to shout. Whatever he say do, just do it. Instead of having business meetings and debate. <laughs> now there were <laughs> there were six water pots of stone of stone, according to the manner of purification of the Jews, containing twenty to thirty gallons of peat. Jesus said to them, fill the water pots with the water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he said to them, draw out some now. 
and take it to the master of the feast. And they took it. And when the master of the feast had tasted the water that was made the wine, and he and did not know where it come from, but the servants who had drawn the water knew. See, somebody knows. Yeah, somebody knows. You may not know, but somebody knows. The master of the feast called the bridegroom. And he said to him, Every man yes, sir. at the beginning sets the good wine, set out the good wine. All right now. And when the guests are well drunk, then the inferior. You kept the good wine until now. Good wine. This beginning of the signs of Jesus did in Canaan and Galilee and manifested his glory. And his disciples believed in him. You may be seated. That's right. Today I want to talk to us about the best will be sometime lasts. Many times in our lives, we got to understand that the best is not always first. That's why Jesus even said, the first shall be last, and the last shall be first. See, Jesus started to identify and let you know that the best don't always have to be first. Right. But we so ingrained in our thoughts and mind that we got to be the best, and we don't understand that sometimes you may be better later than you are right now. See, if it was all based on what we done built our crazy selves to be. We always trying to be the best and you ain't even developed the best yet. See, you already think you the best and you haven't even started being the best. See, God said when you became a Christian, you ain't the best yet. You got to grow into the best. But we already think just because we done got something that we the best right now. And what done polluted our thinking is you got falseness about yourself because the best is steady growing in you. So when we look at the best, that's why I don't like this, but this is the way the world and built it. When we always say these little things that when you meet people, you put your best foot forward, and then you wonder, then, oh, you think that's the way they are. Then later on, you get to learn that ain't who they truly are because you done got deceived yeah. of thinking that was the best. But see, when you understand that when you get to know people and you get to grow things and things start to come, you start to realize that the best of somebody is not what you first met. It's what they ended up revealing of who they are. So the best ain't always the best at that time. And see, we when, when, when we look at this scripture, we got to look at it from where God under, make sure that we understand what God is trying to show us and say to us. He's saying that I am God. But when I do things, you may have to wait for my best so that my best can be appreciated so that you won't ever doubt that you got my best. So I'm going to let you do your thing thinking you got the best. But when I do bring out the best, you gonna know it was better than what you already had. Because see, you thought you was good, but the one that invented good is gonna bring out the best of what we can do. See, we gotta understand that that in the understanding of our belief system and in the miracles of God, that we gotta look at it from a religious thing of beauty. And the way we got to understand it is that it's a theocentric type of belief. A theocentric type of belief is relating to or characterizing by belief in the existence of a God of God. Now, the theocentric part is also, there's an anti part of that. That's where you get the word atheism from. Because the theism is of God. And looking for a God character or gods from the other world. But then you got the atheism in it that is denying any God. But from a theocentric point of view, it's where we get the miracles. Then you got to come to four reasoning conclusions. 
The first one is, I believe in a theocentric view in the world. God is, God made this world, and God sustained this world. I believe Jesus Christ is the only begotten son of the divine God. And Jesus is a supernatural person who does supernatural work. I believe in salvation through faith in Jesus. Jesus saved us from our sins and enabled us to believe in miracles. Because that one miracle that you already got when you accepted Jesus Christ in your life is a miracle that you still back with right now. You got to understand that if you ever learn this, you will start learning greater healing that you get in your life. And here's the first one you need to learn. When Jesus said your sins are forgiven, you're going to have to learn how to forgive yourself so that you can walk in forgiveness. See, that's a miracle right there. Because why is it a miracle? Because that's from the supernatural that's coming into your heart to let your mind know that you're a child of God. But many people bow because they don't even know that they're forgiven. They struggle because they let guilt and pride and shame overcome. But Jesus says, I forgave you the minute you came to the altar and confessed it unto me. But we don't know how to live and walk in forgiveness. But when you learn to do it, you become a miracle of God. Then we believe in the miraculous element of the virtue of the gospel. And if you remove the miracles out the Bible, what good is the Bible? Because the Bible is full of miracles that God has done. And that we can believe in what God is able to do. And it's through the words of God that you can start to believe that God can manifest at any time in your life a miracle in your life that you can't explain it. You don't know where it came from, but you know that the only way it happened is through a divine being through Jesus Christ. Someone said a miracle. It's an occurrence of the natural order worked by a supernatural power. Oh, I love that one. Oh, I, 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 I love it. Y'all want to hear it's a miracle? You wonder how you got out that car wreck right? when you weren't supposed to get out that car wreck. Right? You want to hear a miracle? You were walking down the street and your day told you that your heart just stopped pumping and you weren't supposed to get up. I got hot, little man. But somehow you rose that you are here a miracle. Somehow when you were hungry and food wasn't there, God showed up and produced something in your life. Do you want to hear a miracle? One day you was lost, but now you found. I'm talking about miracles. supernatural that came into a natural the day you were sitting on that pew sitting there coming in from your party that night and you just happened to stumble in the church and the preacher got up and preached and the Holy Spirit touched you that's the supernatural talk about it don't exist no more Five billion people walking around yelling Jesus' name. That's the supernatural to the Yes, Dr. W. T. Collins says a miracle is injection of the will of God into the nature or the human order in such a way that it brings about the results which would be impossible without this special injection of God's will. See, God's will, that's why evil and darkness permeates itself. But the light of God's will All right. starts to overcome what is naturally supposed to happen. All right. All right. 
See, when we understand that your course in life no longer is on a natural plateau. It's not on a supernatural plateau. Because when God starts to come into your life, he's changing you from the natural to the supernatural. And when you start to learn how to be part of the supernatural, then things start to be different, act different, sound different, is different. And the word of God becomes more and more from the natural So when Jesus turned water into wine at the wedding, it's the first recorded miracle. But the miracle was the beginning of his walk on this earth. But what says to see, we want to stay right there. But I'm going to take you in the past, and I'm going to take you in the present. The miracle was the first recorded miracle of Jesus in the physical. But that wasn't the first recorded miracle of Jesus in the supernatural. Because if you remember, when Jacob started to wrestle with somebody, who do you think he was wrestling with? He was such a three Hebrew boy. When he's in a fiery furnace, who do you think was waiting on him when they got there? When Daniel went into the lion's den, who do you think oh, somebody? Synoptics don't have the wedding. But when you look at the wedding, All right. Jesus did some things that started to reverse things in life. Right. See, when you look at what's going on, then you start to think about what's going on. But see, one of the problems that we got is we don't understand what they was under that Jesus had to reverse. Right. And one of the things that he did was he took things out of the temple and the synagogue and he put it in the house. Notice his first miracle was in the home. It wasn't in the synagogue or the temple. And what he did by putting it in the home is to verify that God is not restricted to his place. See, now, watch what I'm going to show you. Under the Old Testament belief, they only believed that they could go deal with God at the temple or the synagogue. But Jesus' first miracle is in the home to start to identify that I'm going to change some stuff. See, that's what he's getting ready to say. Yo, see, that's why you got to have a renewed mind to start to live the way God wants you to live. See, the Jews couldn't understand because God said, we got to go to the temple. We got to go to the synagogue and we want to see God. But Jesus tore a veil and said, I'm going to open it up if you're going to find me anywhere. Where two or three are gathered. So he's at the home of Nathaniel in Canaan. All right. And he announces, it's the same place in Canaan that he announced to the nobleman that I'm going to heal your son that was dying. See, it was in the home that it took place. 
It wasn't no great place. It was a general raggedy place on 25th and Popkin. Right. <laughs> it was a ghetto wedding. Yeah. 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 And if you ever been to ghetto weddings, they go run out of wine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying. <laughs> and they usually run out right when the liquor store doesn't close. <laughs> the wedding was in the home of the bride. But the feast was provided by the bride's crew. And the ruler is somebody important would show up to preside at the wedding. Yeah. So somebody important showed up, but they didn't think he was important. Yeah. Mary and Jesus and the disciples, John and Andrew and Simon and, P and Philip and Nathaniel, they were invited guests, but they weren't important. Uh -huh. Notice there was somebody else important. Right. And see, Jesus understand protocol, which is what our problem is. See, see, let me help you out. This ain't in the notes, but it's in your mind. <laughs> right. See, one right. of the things that we keep talking about, Jesus set us free. Yeah. Jesus obeyed what was there. Yeah. See, we keep trying to break something God done established. And God said, the hierarchy is mine. Yeah. Who are you to go against what I have done? Yes. Yeah. But Jesus understood this. Yes. So when he when the miracle took place yeah. and the wedding party didn't have any more wine, they told Mary, we don't have no more wine. I wonder why they went to Mary. <laughs> <laughs> the Holy Spirit must have knew where to put it. <laughs> and see, Mary knew exactly what to do. Oh yeah. Uh, this is uh, this, this, this is this is that not gonna get home. Mary knew what to do. Come on. Go talk to you. Mary knew who he was. Right. So Mary knew who to go talk to. Right. Church, let me keep telling you something. Let me show you about your faith. You need to quit talking to folk that don't uh, you ain't got the answer to the right. You need to talk to the one that knows the answer to your problem. Why can you even have him in your life if you don't want to go to the wise one of your life? Quit talking to Mary, Peter, and Paul and go to Jesus who got the answer to your problem. And the women, they exceeded the one. He said, woman, why are you bothering me with this? Yeah. But see, that's our problem. Yeah. Jesus didn't mind her bothering her. He just gonna let her know. You ain't gonna tell me when to do it. Yeah. <laughs> see, yeah, how many of you done gave up on God because he ain't did it when you want him to? Come on, Come on now, just so yeah. let me tell you, let me just tell you in your house. The reason why you done gave up on him, because he didn't do it the way you wanted or when you wanted. But he didn't tell you nothing. You just didn't want to wait on him. And you did your own thing. Then you did in this mess, and you only tell me that he said, I want to bless you here, but I got to get you out of this. Then back you up when you were. Then I can call somebody. See, that's where we are today. We got a McDonald God. And God said, I ain't no I'm God by myself. And he said, my time ain't came yet. But Mary knew what we should know. Mary knew what he said. But she knew there was a problem. And she knew her son. And she knew that her son, now this is what she's smart and we done. She didn't know how he was going to do it. But she knew he was going to do it. So Mary got sick. See, Mary got sick. Mary said, son, we got an issue. Yeah. But if I said, mother, love your baby. 
But my time ain't come. Yes. I'm gonna leave it right there. Whatever he tell you to do, you do. But I know my son gonna do something. I don't know when he's gonna get it. I don't know how he's gonna get it. I don't know what he's gonna do. But I know my son. My son is gonna do something. And I don't need to be calling him King of Kings and Lord of Lords. You should know that the Son of God, if you take that request, it's gonna do something. He ain't gonna leave you out there. He gonna do something. He said, "If my children call my name, I'm gonna do something." I'm teaching Bible today. Oh, he may reply. No, he may reply, not yet. He may reply, it's come. And he may not say nothing. But let me tell you something. God is going to do something. That's why you got to learn to turn. That's why you got to learn to meditate. That's why you got to learn to wait. Because he's prayer, he taking something out of you. He, he, he's making you reach up. And he's making you yearn for him. And then he's going to do something. See, Mary had confidence in him. How many of you go up with confidence in him? See, she had confidence in him. She knew he was going to do something. See, most of us ain't got that much confidence in him. See, you felt you done been let down. He's yeah. right that he's ready to do something in your life. You go and do something else. And then he's sitting over there wondering, bro, why couldn't you just wait a little while longer? Why can't you just hold on a little while longer? Why can't you just pray a little while longer? Why can't you just fellowship with me a little while longer? See, turning that water into wine was a symbolism of what God can do. Yeah. And see, when God took all those 27 gallons and he turned them into that ceremony of wine, Jesus said to his servants, he said, see, that's why you got to learn to listen to God. Yeah. See, he may tell you something that don't make sense. Yeah. See, he may say, fill up the water. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Come on. All right, all right. All right. You know, when I out there all day trying to start your car, he said, go start the car. You been out there fishing all day like Peter, and then he said, drop the mail on the other side. You been sitting around crying all day, wondering what's going on, and God said, get up and start doing something. You done got yourself into the corner of the back of the Red Sea, and you got your enemy coming at you, and the Red Sea is behind you, and you sit there praying, and he may say, get up! But you got to learn to listen. He said, fill up the Lord. And the servants, thank God, they knew how to be served. Because he, he would have told us that. Fill up your own Lord. <laughs> Oh, here's the big one. Here's the Christian answer. God didn't tell me to do that. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Hello, I'll tell you. You know I'm in your house. You know I'm in your house. All right. All right. You, you know I'm in your house. Ain't no use of lying. Right. I'm in your house. Because it didn't make sense to you. Then. He, he, he see, all they had to do was fill it up. All you got to do is tell him what to do. See, when he tell you what to do, just do it. Because watch this. As soon as he they did what he said do, they didn't have to do nothing else. Don't you know that once you do what God tells you to do, you ain't got to do nothing else? He got it the rest of the way. And God said, let me help y'all out. See, let me get what you let me, let, me, let me get what I can get where I can get. Yeah, I see, 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 I, I need to get where you are. See, watch this. 
See, like the Rick Renshaw rule, and we were talking about that today. See, his problem was he was willing to have faith in everything but what was dear to him. See, our problem is we got faith in God on, on, the, on the generic stuff. But if it's dear to you, you don't have no faith. Because you want to have control of it. See, if that rich one you to know what he was telling me. Not only you think you rich, Sam. Give it up. And watch how rich you can be. I don't take without remorse. I don't take and I just let you not have nothing. If you give it to me, I'm going to do what my scriptures say. If you're going to reap what you sow, I'm going to multiply it. And all you got to do is just do what he gave you to do. So when they got through doing it, they gave him Jesus saying, now draw it out. Now watch this. He didn't say take it to the bride. He didn't say take it to the groom. He didn't say take it to just everybody. He said, take it to the head, do dead like Somebody that's supposed to be greater than me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> see, I talk about us. I talk about us. See, and see, watch this. You want to impress your bosses? You worry about your job? You worry about the job that God gave you? God ain't worried about them folks. He said, take it to the people you think was better than me. And let them take what I'm doing. See, that's what's wrong with us. But Jesus ain't scared to show out. But he'll take, when he got some obedient people, he'll say, take it to them. Take it to them. Take it to them. I'm going to give you a perfect example. I remember. I got a testimony on this one. I remember when I was, when God told me to get out to the United States Air Force. I had just re-enlisted. I had five and a half years left on my contract. And he said, get out. And I looked at the Lord and said, oh, uh -uh. I know he all in Jesus. They ain't going to let me out. He said, go fill out the papers. I filled out the papers. My commander said, I ain't signing. He said, but you can turn them in if you want to. I turned them in. I left them right there. Six months later, I'm inside the communication room. And the Lord said, look down. And they were typing in over the teletype. The order, the release of Sergeant Richardson from the United States Air Force. What I told I said, look, I said, see if you let They told me no. He said, did I tell you to get out? Now what if I never even took the first step? All I did was set out the paper. Everybody from the general on down. They ain't letting you out. I was in Emporia, Kansas, in October, yeah. from Madrid, Spain, in June. <laughs> because God, yeah. and I'll never live with almost like these scriptures, that when I got the orders, he said, take it to your gym. <laughs> take it to the gym, sir. I'm released. But see, this is what God can do when we let him do it. Amen. Amen. See, see, a miracle is you got a little part to play. Sometimes all you got to do is what he say to do. And when you learn to do that, all of a sudden he'll do more than you can imagine. So after they filled up the pots yes, sir. and they gave it to him, Jesus dealt with the legalistic rituals of, of the water. Because he wasn't even supposed to use that water. Because that was the purification water. But God ain't bound by man's law. God's going to do what he needs to do. So Jesus took the regular water that was supposed to be 
purified. And he turned it into the best wine that they ever drank. And I can imagine what it's like at the ghetto party. Break it down, right? You've been drinking booze for a long time. That's not that thing. Yeah, you get some wine that don't even have a name on it. It ain't even been invented yet. You can't even buy it at the store no more. I done gave you some wine that after you get through drinking this wine, you can't buy this wine. You can't go nowhere to get this wine. This is a once in a life. See, I'm talking about supernatural. It succeeds in that. So when he turned the water into wine, the water in the wine has significant value to us. Turning water into wine reveals Christ's creative power. We don't know exactly how he did it. We just know it was done. We don't know how Jesus put it out, but we know it was Jesus' will to turn that water it's a wine. Now watch what this done caused. Now we sitting around 2,000 2, years later fighting over can we drink or not? <laughs> Say that again, Pastor. <laughs> Say that again. <laughs> I ain't gonna stay there long. I gotta go. But I just want you to know. So everybody over to see then you get around all these sanctified folks. But I love my sanctified folk because they kind of telling the truth. But then you get around all these folk like Jesus turned water into wine. What do they mean? You want me to go? Let me help you out. Jesus turned water into wine. But let me help you out. But in the Bible, in Timothy, God tells, not only in Timothy, but in Titus, God says, all of these folk can drink, but pastors, you need to abstain. But we don't want to hear that. But see, because Jesus turned water into wine, even the preacher that turned the water into wine. But God didn't say for him to turn. See, I'm just preaching the Bible. <laughs> See, I preach the Bible. <laughs> then, not only did he reveal that, but he, 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 he built and released the purpose of a hollow family, All right. a more holy and consecrated family. So what he did was he did his first miracle in the home, and it did not replace the temple or the synagogue, but what he did do, was let the people know eventually holiness and consecration don't have to be in the church or in the synagogue or in the temple. But if you're living right and if you're doing right, you can have a home that is holy and consecrated under God because his first miracle was in the home. And he's saying, I'm not limited to certain places. I do it where I choose to do it. It reveals his glory. The disciples saw his glory. It manifested his name. And even the ruler and the bridegroom and the bride realized that a miracle had happened. And it radiated his glory from that forth on. Can you imagine the folk? How y'all know how we do it? Come on now. How when you got something good? What did you think you did? You think you just went home drunk and said, oh, that's all right. You woke up the next morning and did what? You told everybody. When they left that wedding, they told everybody about how good the wine was. And they told everybody who did it. And they proclaim his greatness and his glory. The wine also revealed that God is self-sufficient. 
See, Jesus has all the power to meet your needs and your life shortages, whatever problems you got. This is why I try to tell everybody. See, you need to have witnesses, but your problem is you keep looking for everybody else to fix your problems. Don't you know you got a God that want to fix your problems? That you don't need other folks to fix your problems? The problem with us is we keep looking for other folks to fix your problems. And you can get back in the same mess that he pulled you out of. But when you learn to let God fix your problems, you ain't got to worry about that problem no more. You got money problems. Then do what God tell you to do. The biggest problem right now with folk, especially young folk, you won't got money problems, you don't understand God's principle. I can't take no $7 an hour job. What can I gonna do with a seven hour job? job? Well, let me tell you, God say do the seven. And I'll make it 14. When I make it 14, I'll make it 28. And when I get out of the hours, I'll give you a job. That'll be more than sufficient for your needs. But you've got to do what I am told. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They don't want to suffer. But Jesus is self-sufficient. He said, I satisfy every heart and every thirst. That he that longs for him. Then the last thing you got to understand. That Jesus, do the wine reveals, better things is to come. And I'm so glad today that I got Jesus in my life. Because I'm only to the wise tell that better things is to come. But I can testify that God and God alone done walked me through, done took me through, done brought me through, done set me through, and lifted me up, and set me up. But I didn't see a way, he made a way out of nowhere. Where I didn't have nowhere to go, he showed up. So I was crying. On my knees, God did his thing. When I didn't have a car to drive, God said, just hold on a little while longer. Now, look what I have done in your life. I done took the water. I done turned it into wine. I took the water in you, and I done made the wine out of you. You are sweet smell. You are a sweet wine. Tell them the same water that you drink is the same water that they can drink. But when they drink it, when they drink it, according to the Bible, when they drink it, according to the Bible, he said, you will never thirst again. But I'm going to take it a little bit further. Where Paul said, do not be drunk. Oh, why? But to the point that you can't even walk. But he said, if you don't get drunk, he said, get filled. Get filled. Get filled with the Holy Spirit. And if you can be drunk, you can walk drunk, you can stumble, and you can act the fool. And they say, what's wrong with you? And you just say, no, I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. I'm drunk. I'm drunk. I'm drunk. Oh, Jesus. 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 He's a miracle worker. Not only can he turn water into wine, but he can make a miracle out of your life. And don't you know they're going to talk about you? But do you just hang in there? Because yes. one day, one day. that water uh -huh. is going to be wine. Yes. 
And they don't say what happened. And you just gonna look back. You ain't gonna look to the left. And you ain't gonna look to the right. Matter of fact, if you're good, just turn on around and look at it. I was walking down line. And sooner, you're going to learn what the scriptures say. That's why I'm not too worried about the best coming forth. Because I already know the best is going to come. That's why when we get to fighting and fussing with each other, I just look at you. You know I look at you. What you fussing about? That ain't their best. They just getting started. Give them time. Get out of them. And let God grow them into their best. And this began. The signs of Jesus did in Canada, Canaan of Galilee, manifested his glory, and his disciples believed him. Yes. Church, you are a continuation yes. of the manifestation yes. of his miraculous glory. Yes. It hasn't stopped, and it won't stop. It won't stop. It won't stop. It won't stop. Until he come back and declare the end is he. And then watch this. In all eternity, you're going to be transformed into the best one. The doors of the church is open now. This is a chance to return from war to one. Amen. Amen. God is calling.